Just ahead on Your Money in Business, digging for success will go inside a local development company building communities for 25 years. How a sophisticated approach to selling wines has been a boon to business and a surge in generator power. Why more Marylanders are looking to buy. It's all next. Your money in business starts now. Hello and welcome to Your Money and Business. I'm Jeff Salkin. A leading development firm celebrates 25 years in business and also welcomes a new president. The company is the Bizzuto Group. The new president is Toby Bizzuto. Sir, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. People have heard the name. They may not know exactly what the Bizzuto Group does, so give us a little history. Sure. Uh, the company was founded about 25 years ago, literally 25 years ago this year, by my father, Tom, and two partners. Um, the, the company, best I can describe it, is a full-service real estate company. We have a management company that manages about 40,000 apartments from here to Boston. We have a development company with about 3,000 units under construction. A construction company does about $300 million a year in revenue. And lastly, we have a home building company which builds townhomes and condominiums. How much of the business is apartments as opposed to single family? You know, lately, it's a cyclical business, of course, um, and, and these things for sale comes and goes and rental comes and goes. Rental's obviously been enjoying a, a resurgence um, over the past, I'll call it five to seven years. What we have is, we call it renters by choice in the product that we design. But home building is also coming back. And you have some years like 2013 where we're enjoying the benefit of both markets being pretty, fairly robust. So the, the, the big recession, the great recession of, of five or six years ago was hugely disruptive for the real estate business. Uh, people at that point, maybe you had some renters who were not renters by choice. How did that impact the market? Yeah, what we saw, you know, during 2008, there was, of course, the credit crunch. The credit crunch ended up constraining supply in the apartment market by its very nature of constraining equity and debt. By 2009 and 2010, equity and debt reentered the market, and companies like mine were able to start new apartment projects and new home building projects. But the bloom was off the rose for for sale housing to some degree for some people. It, for sale housing became not viewed as you know, a slot machine where you put money in and you return a, a greater amount. So renting actually became in many ways a, not only a preference but a necessity for some people. So occupancy rates went up yes. and rents went up? Occupancy rates and rents went up from 2008 even to today, 2013. About depending on whether you're talking about Baltimore or Washington, an average of about five to seven percent a year, uh, going up, in increases. So you said 2013 has been been a good year to this point. Um, what's the impact of the the uh, the little bump up in in rates that we've seen, which is actually fairly rapid, although we're talking about small numbers. You know. I, 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 I tend to look at the news every day and listen to reports, and you could see a small rise in interest rates as a you know temporary aberration. I mean, it's we're still on a relative basis from a macro standpoint so much better off than we were with you know something like an eight percent mortgage rate over the past fifty or sixty years on average. So yes, rates have gone up, but they've gone up from an an unbelievable historical low. So we're still seeing a tremendous amount of interest in home buying. Let's talk about some of the, the projects that your company sure. is known for. What are you working on now in, in Metro Washington, Metro Baltimore that, that people might be familiar with? So our company is a Washington-based company, but I live in Baltimore, as does my father, Tom. And we're very proud of a project we finished two, about three years ago called the Fitzgerald next to the Lyric Opera House. Uh, we're also delivering a project called Union Wharf in Fells Point on Wolf Street, which is just an unbelievable project for us and a true showcase of the design-centric spirit that we build our projects. Uh, we would like to distinguish ourselves in a, in a field that's otherwise very crowded with good competitors by making projects that truly will stand the test of time and will uplift people that live there uh, sort of emotionally, even if they're not even if only subconsciously they're perceiving the architecture. 
So we're doing that, and we're building some townhomes at Uplands, um, and we're building townhomes in Towson also, and that's our Baltimore projects. And, and in, in D.C.? Please. Uh, we're building a, a $250 million project at Catholic University, and we're building a $110 million project on Wisconsin Avenue with a, a giant grocery as the anchor right across from National Cathedral. So they're two very high-profile projects that we feel extremely blessed to be a part of. Are these all uh, rental units or, or some condos, and, and how do you decide what it's going to be? Sure. Um, disproportionately over the past two years, we have developed apartments. We have 3,000 units currently under construction, whereas we only have maybe 250 homes under construction, homes being for sale product. We, we're beginning to see an uptick in home buying, and we're looking for more supply, uh, to deliver more supply to the market. Is, is there a lack of, uh, of land, of developable property at this point? You know, it's interesting. We choose very complicated sites. We choose infill, high-profile sites where there's a real sense of place. I don't want to de develop in a cornfield somewhere. It's just not the vision that we have. Um, so yes, it is difficult, and it's a, the Washington and Baltimore area, as I mentioned before, have some wonderful other developers. So that we're in, there's a lot of competition for sites. Yeah, there was a profile of you recently in the in the Baltimore Sun that talked about your um, initial focus on music, maybe yes. a music career before you came back to the family business. Tell tell me a little about that journey. Well, I grew up in a household where my my mother was a musician and. Uh, she taught me how to play piano, and then, of course, I played in a band in high school and in college. And I became enamored with music and writing music in particular, and then began to enjoy business and tried to combine the two, and had a short stint. Um, every summer, I interned for Sony Records and then ultimately worked for Electra Records after college. Well, one of the really interesting things was Sony Records hired me to work out of my dorm room senior year of college. So I was a full, a part-time employee of Sony Records. That's a pretty good gig with a great commute. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was great, and um, ultimately, I, you know, my father never had approached me about joining the, what is now a family business, and I, I came to it on my own. Um, and before I worked for him, he, he and his partners required that I, I should go to graduate school, work for someone else, and I did all of those things and joined the company in 2000. Looking One. forward to maybe another 25 years. Yes, I'm, I'm very hopeful and optimistic as well. Very good. Toby Bazzuto of the Bazzuto Group, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.